fighting a severe um, climate trauma coming from the tropical uh, areas of South Africa. I hope that your spirits will be warm up the next couple of three days. Um, and we're very well with you with the conference. Join the dots, point and shift, pause, discontinuity, and rupture, and we dance work today. Which is um, quite an important topic. And uh, for us, our two members of the um, who have been closely associated with contemporary dance for the last uh, 30 years, we're very happy that um, this conference on um, very important and also very inconvenient questions in the lives and careers and challenges of um, dancers, the practitioners, um, will be asked in a very broad a variety of uh, formats. During the three days, I hope that uh, you'll be invited to um, many good topics to so come here from uh, all parts of uh, South Asia. So warm up completely to those who uh, took a long way to come to Foggy uh, Delhi in January. And um, thank you to the Gatti Dance Forum and to Dance Dialogues who organized uh, this conference, and particularly to Rajana Day and to Victor Mayenga, who are the creators of this conference. And I think now is the time to uh, not only thank the Gatti once again to having survived all preparations for also a festival, which you shouldn't forget, maybe some promotional words with follow. And please welcome the festival director, Rekinda. Thanks so much.
In fact, the word, um, the words that we're using, especially the word rapture, um, was uh, uh, Anusha came up with it, but she's not, she's not here, right? So she's one person to thank for the particular word and for pushing us in that direction. Um, so we, we wanted to look at these watershed points of journeys in practice, uh, journeys that practitioners have taken, where things have changed, where they've taken decisions that have affected not only their own cause, but perhaps the cause of how dance is looked at in the context that they work in and beyond. Um, the other point is that um, there are dance conferences and dance conferences that often what happens in a dance conference is that practice is commented upon um, very well and very analytically, but there's not, um, in my experience, there's not been so much room given to the practitioner themselves to talk about their own work in a way that they would like to present it. And that was also um, a concern that we had that we really wanted to give um, the practitioner um, to foreground, foreground the practitioner, not just in terms of, okay, here's a panel discussion, here's a big uh, presentation, but also to give them uh, the option, the choice of choosing what format they would like to present their work and how they would like to frame their work. And Ranjana will talk a little about that in a bit, but really getting practitioners to the fore, how they want to talk about their work, how they want to present their work, and the questions that they have articulated for themselves and working through that with us. That was really the sort of overall thrust of the, of the conference. Um, so really trying to, trying to find the discourse that comes out of practice rather than looking at practice through discourse was really uh, what we had in mind. Because after all, it is a conference situated in a performance festival and we really wanted to keep that connection with performance very, very strong from today. Now over to Ranjana, we will talk a little bit about previous. Okay, we have said a little bit about uh, how we uh, uh, pick the presenters. So they are just as diverse as possible in terms of form, genre, region of work and also the context of their work. And uh, we evolved uh, a few formats in conversation with them. And incidentally, the first one is a conversation, which is a dialogue between two or sometimes three people that focuses on mapping points of shift in dance through the narratives of individuals, institutions, and also local histories. There are work sharings where uh, you'll see one this evening where uh, Practitioners are looking at uh, literally points of shift, cause, discontinuity, or rupture. That's a breath is possible in the in the process of making work. So in the evening, what they're going to do is uh, pick. Uh, it's called three questions, three discoveries, and they're going to literally pick three points and three, or three questions and take you through their process. Um, then. Uh, there, are there are lecture demonstrations as one right after this conversation with Maya, with Sharmila Viswas, who is going to tell us about uh, about her Odissi choreography and how she uh, how she works with the performing arts tradition of Odisha to create it. Um, there is an open rehearsal tomorrow morning uh, with Padmini Chattu. And uh, so those are those are largely the formats that you want to see in the morning and the the afternoons are slightly, we have free time, that doesn't mean you go away. <laughs> but uh, this afternoon, we have uh, two hours for an open, one, one and a half hours for an open space session. So what we'd like uh, any of you to do, any of you from here, uh, is uh, you should propose, just propose topics. There will be sheets on the walls behind you. You can propose topics of interest that emerge, uh, anything, anything that you'd like to talk about, discuss with a group of people. They, it could be something that comes up in conference, it could be something that you've been thinking of generally uh, in terms of dance. And uh, and people just decide whom, which uh, discussion they want to be a part of. So we are aiming at having about four or five uh, and there will be, but I mean you can propose as many sessions as you want. 
Uh, this afternoon, we also have one on one sessions because while talking about process, we felt uh, that it was also really important to look at the other aspects that complement the creative process because often as artists, we are also doing all of these things at the same time. So this afternoon, we have a one on one session with a lawyer who is going to speak about copyright. Uh, with Mary, uh, law, the lawyer is his name is Lawrence Liang. Uh, Mary Purkala, who is going to speak about outreach, marketing, and communications for the arts, and um, and a session about writing, writing about your own work. Uh, there's the, with the same with the same uh, people. We're also having clinics tomorrow, which are. It's literally like when you, when you go to the doctor, you take an appointment and you tell the doctor your problem. So they, they are your doctors tomorrow and you can make an appointment with them and ask them your questions about copyright or about writing, marketing. And uh, appointments for the sessions will start, registrations or appointments will start after the one-on-one -on -one sessions this evening. Uh, you, there's also a lot of paper hanging from trees and suspended in various places outside the hall. So the tree is a resource tree. The idea is that if you have um, if you have any skills that you or resources that you'd like to offer to the dance community, or if there's if there are skills or resources that you need, you just write a note and uh, with your contact details please and hang it up there and hopefully no wish will be granted. Um, and there's a, there's a there is going to be a map of shared histories uh, in Sitar Hall by hopefully by this afternoon. The idea is that you just populate it with your own histories, the histories of people you worked with, maybe mark collaborations with people, and it's a map it's a map of South Asia, so that will arrive. Uh, and yes, and there's something else coming up out there. It's a why and because board, and in time we will know what it does. Uh, that's that's all about the format. Now some house rules. Uh, the first one of which we've already flouted carefully. No tea and coffee inside this hall, so that it stays clean. Um, what is this? <laughs> have to put it as well. Switch no, but um, uh, yes. that's uh, just about the impact. Yes, yes. Okay, so please do your time. There's an, uh, that's the second one. The third one is that most of you have an info pack that has the Ignite brochure, the flyer, a public transport map of Delhi, a Sangeet Nathan Kadir flyer, a map of Agam schedule. Um, it has. Uh, a welcome letter to the festival and a note passes, pass, passes. passes to the festival and a pencil which you will have to sharpen outside. Um, <laughs> and don't lose your lunch coupons because if you lose that you don't get lunch. They are in your ID cards. And uh, the tea coupons will be written Yes, tea coupons will be given to you just before tea. There is a festival blog that you can all check out. It's called tiltforshift.wordpress.com and it's being updated live. Um, we'd like to, we'd also like to introduce uh, Frederick Lombard who is making a documentary on the festival. And uh, we warn that he's going to be in your face all the time. Don't beat him up. <laughs> and uh, generally if you need any help, uh, uh, there's uh, there are different. You can ask all of us. There's Parvati who uh, will address all the hospitality questions. There's uh, raise your hand. Please. There's Zui who uh, is taking care of registrations. Uh, near the canteen, there's Koshali who has passes for the festival. Mandeep is here. Vipin was here. Uh, you, Vikram and I are also here. So yeah, ask us anything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hello. 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 Yeah. Please louder than me. <laughs> oh, just you wait. You're gonna get louder for sure. Let you warm up. So Maya actually needs very little introduction, but I'm gonna make an attempt anyway. 
Um, Maya Krishna Rao is a theatre performer, an activist, no. and an educator. Not an activist anymore. No, he never was. <laughs> it's in your bio, Maya. I mean, I've picked it up from your bio. <laughs> so clearly you've written the bio at some point, now you're denying it. Them for you sometimes. Okay, fine. So I'm going to read it out from. Uh, so actually, I'm going to do a personal one then, in that case. So, one of the most exciting things about Maya, uh, from my experience of being in the same city as her and being a practitioner like her, is the fact that she belongs to these, or doesn't belong to these categories of theatre. Um, stand-up comedy, dance, you don't know how to categorize her and she's sort of traversing through these territories and I find that that's really the most exciting thing that for dancers it's really lovely to uh, to be challenged by her because she is looking at her practice through so many lenses and she has so many different resources to uh, draw from for her, for her work. Um, so we thought actually a session with her where we could really um, because she works alone in the studio, usually with a camera, as far as I remember. So we thought it would be really nice to take this opportunity to um, start unpacking her creative process, really to the bone, to really see how she starts um, working on a project, what are the starting points, and what are the kinds of um, strategies she has in the studio, how does she start building her blocks for the work. Um, so we thought it would be really good to have her here and I think you need to help me here a little bit because I think I, I'm going to be uh, asking the questions from my perspective as a practitioner but after a while I'm going to open it out and in between I really actually open the space out to say you know so if you think you really want to get some more information out at that particular point in time just interject. Not all together, so you may want to. Um, and I think that's uh, the, the framework of the conversation, is to really get to the bottom of her creative process. And we, I thought what would be useful is to look at two works, to look at two specific works and look at how she built them um, during the rehearsal process. And these works are heads are meant for walking into and a deep fried jam. You got them right, no? In the morning I got it wrong. She's like, no, that isn't the title of the work. <laughs> I'll get you again. There's another version. A deeper fried jam. Oh, a deeper <laughs> So I thought that I'm going to just start with this very simple question about heads are meant for walking into to say what was the first little seed for that work. So, uh, I've done two or three, uh, made two or three performances. Uh, the first one was Desperately and Lonely to be Alone, uh, and uh, it wasn't happy. So the next one, again, happened to be alone. And the third one, I said, I, I'll probably go mad if this carries on like this. So I per force got someone uh, to come and work with me. And he started with the um, uh, condition. We will not start with story, with, with uh, headlines from the newspaper, nothing. Shall we just go in uh, with ourselves? He's a filmmaker. Um, he's many things, actually. And I must name him right from the start, because he's co contributed a lot to who I am and how I made, or how I made. This is all in the distant past, OK? <laughs> this is not what happens now. Uh, so, Shulajit Sarkar. So we go into my room and we play for 10, 15 days, sometimes two hours because that's the kind of time he has sometimes all day. And we go into that room and we say that we will start with as is, where is, like an auction. And so it happened to be, luckily for me, a very, very cluttered uh, garage turned into a studio space where if you stamp too hard, your foot will go through the floor. And so putting up putting, uh, uh, just grabbing, and we wanted it to be random. What happens when the mind, uh, when you are uh, face to face with things that you place there randomly? I, I, he came with a camera, and I told him, can you also, uh, I, had, I had a camera, but I used to only uh, use it, as, as Mandeep said, to, to document uh, improvisations. But this time, I told myself, I'm going to hold it. 
and see what, what happens. And of course, the moment I have no idea, and this is another element, I, I must, because you're standing alone in a space, every moment you've got to be somewhere for me, aware <coughs> of some new surprise. Let all your antenna be out, because if you stand in a room, it can be the most self-conscious, self navel gazing act uh, that was ever born. So how do you stand there and be inside of yourself, outside of yourself, outside of the room, and be surprised uh, by anything and everything that comes your way? And I'll just say this in a flash, everything is going to be in a flash today, that Kathavali somewhere has helped me because the stance of the Kathavali performer is always like that. And so even though you're trained to be like that as an actor, you somehow that gets imprinted in your body and you become you can become a performer with amazement as a state of being. Yes? What do you mean by being as something? Sorry? You asked you said something about Kathakali dance. The Kathakali when you get on stage and when you're playing a character, not when you're training, when you get into a character, your eyes have to be like that. Surprise. Now we call it surprise. But in, in Kathagali, the emotion of surprise is actually something else. It's but when I calm down, this is my normal face in Kathagali. <laughs> 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 so connected with that, that, there is nothing that is normal or of the ordinary in Kathagali. That the moment you enter a space, you belong to the extraordinary, even as a person. So this sense of extraordinariness is something that if you've trained in it for years, you don't have to think about it after a point. And this has helped me hugely, hugely, hugely to be able to enter a space and sense an extraordinariness even without anything beginning. So, with some sense of uh, ridiculous uh, confidence, we both entered this room and we would just grab stuff and put them there. And I told Shurajit right from the start, please go on surprising me. Don't, sh ah, we had some don'ts. No shooting of clips from outside and bringing them into the rehearsal room because uh, that's a fussy world outside and it is very, you can get, um, what's the word, sucked in. You can get sucked in by a whole lot of very fussy images uh, and uh, I had already previously done a show called Departures where he only took single images from the world outside or single images. It's like zeroing in on that, that little peg of the apple uh, thing to go right into it because of course the naked eye can't see all the particles of dust sitting on it. And if you, if you zoom in there and if you project it large, many things happen. One is that the scale of the large and the small. This is one of the first things that happened to me in the rehearsal process. Uh, they happen to be these little dolls on the shelf. They are these uh, dolls from Tamil Nadu. They're made of wood. And they are these men and women. And they became the stamp of the show. Because when you zoomed into them, there was a woman, a pregnant woman, with her sari blouse here and a sari there. And she was, so when you projected her belly, she, her belly became her, her pregnancy became larger than anything that I was. And yet I could see her really there. So that was hugely surprising and challenging to have her there and to have her a sense of her. Because again, as a performer, you're holding a camera. You're also wanting, you're wondering what should I shoot. Shuruji is shooting the, uh, shooting the objects. So what started happening to me was I took the uh, camera onto myself. So then on another screen with two projectors, your own pores are getting enlarged. Uh, and then as you, uh, uh, by day two or three, when I started seeing these pores, I started, um, you know, things like putting a band-aid there with a little, scribble a little note very quickly with shh, eyes shut. Because again, you want to be surprised. Putting it in there, uh, putting a band-aid, and then taking the camera like that, zooming in, and of course, you start realizing that the audience there, whoever that audience is going to be, is seeing everything simultaneously. They're seeing that pregnant woman, they're seeing this real, real woman shooting her bit of her arm with this band-aid, and that image of this woman plus that, plus the real woman who's surrounded by her real things. When you take all of that into account, you yourself transport yourself into another's world. 
So if uh, I don't know, yeah, if, uh, am I going too fast? Uh, so um, this became uh, like a wheel within a wheel, a play within a play, uh, a way of self triggering uh, yourself every day, this whole time when you're happy. So in the beginning, Maya, did you, did you even think of um, what the show was eventually going to be? No. So in the beginning, in all of these improvisations, it was just about uh, what um, what uh, your sense of being was, being there with the camera. Yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering whether, uh, whether from there on, whether you began to have a sense of the work, what you were feeding into. Because I, I think, from my own experience of making, whatever little experience I have, is that very soon you start thinking, where does this really belong? Yeah. You know, what am I really creating into? Um, because you didn't start with a very large peg to hang things yeah. off. I'm wondering whether at some point you began to think about what this canvas really was. This works. happened to us uh, on the, I don't know, third, fourth, whatever day, and we realized if we don't document uh, the stuff that's working, all we told ourselves, the images or the moments that work, work being, you know, they work or they don't work. And uh, then we will, uh, we had a still camera, we would just make a huge contact sheet of all these images. They were flowing when you make them, they are moving. But then when you capture them on a still camera, so we made like in the old days what's called a huge contract sheet of some hundred odd images of moments that seem to work. And we told ourselves, we're not going to be in a hurry. We will let, we will let those images speak to us. So I'm going to very quickly now show you exactly what we shot. Um, <coughs> So what is the kind of, uh, call it narrative or call it whatever you like, it becomes very complex for this one person who's not standing on the outside and watching it. I don't have a director, but I have to sense that this is happening and that is happening. But in the big, so that was one thing. The other thing I realized was that, um, uh, oh, what's going on in my head? <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is really somewhat how we. So we have a, we have a, a, a t uh, so it's on the last one second. How do I? Oh, how do I? Yes. Okay, so you can see the table. You can see this. This was just. Too amazing for me that my hands, the moment I grab her, you know, the contradiction of am I am I getting in there and holding her down, or you know, this uh, how do you enter with what kind of musculature to with what kind of what you want to discover a relationship with her? Looking at her is one kind of relationship, and the moment your hand enters the screen, uh, multiplicities of. Uh, how you one can relate to her, which you have never experienced in your life, I haven't, of my hand becoming so large and touching a woman, or not touching her, or being around her. And then the impact of that, my hand there, when my hand became not my hand, and yet my hand, 
So all of this started impacting uh, pretty hugely, as you can see. So uh, there's one camera there, and there's one there's one on the table, and Shurajit is somewhere there with her. And this and and then we started doing things like uh, so that's one shot, and then he's putting a little inset of a bunch of puppets that are actually hanging off somewhere else. This is all just to keep firing the imagination because the show has to be made of what will transpire in, uh, with the form of camera and body. So again, these puppets are from somewhere else and those women. Now this, I can't tell you when this, this, this image happened, I was taken back to films of, uh, I don't know, you know, like uh, around independence, 1930s, 40s. Um, these, these kind of silhouettes coming from the, uh, from the sun rising, this awakening of New India. Every day was just moments of very high excitement. And you realize this damn thing can actually take over, what you're saying. It can take over. So when your imagination is getting into, ah, and some, you know, some milke, milke chalo, milke chalo, some Ghana is like that is coming to you of 1947, you've got to cut at it. You've got to cut at it. And because it's a here and now body and you're a woman sitting at your desk, so what are you doing? With that image of a film of the, 20, uh, of the 40s. Um, am I making myself? So you keep cutting yourself. I, I have a question actually. At some point when you were doing this, this work of um, working these objects and camera and sort of building this canvas of objects, images and your own body in there and uh, uh, your collaborator's body, I'm wondering at some point did you have this fright that is this really a show? Is there something in there that's watchable for people? And did, did that ever sort of, did you have a moment where you felt like, okay, I need to at least see what is it that I, what kind of logic am I building? Even, even on a timeline, did you think, did you start thinking of that at some point? Well, we were caught between two, two, two tensions uh, and you, you make it tiny notes but you don't even want to make notes because at the end of it when you collect your contact sheet, you really want these images to speak to you. You don't want to go away and become that kind of actor who's giving herself a hundred notes. So, so this was an improvised eventually, right? You knew eventually what was happening on a timeline each time you did it. No, no. You're Absolutely. improvising every day. So one day it's just the dolls, mm. and when you see the dolls and you see that little insert, you speak something. But I'm not quickly writing it. So that hawa uh, mein So what I'm trying to say is that wo hawa mein because improvisation for me is very frightening. Yeah. You know, nothing I do would remains improvised by the time it's on stage. It's only because I feel like the logic of it in my head needs to be so clear, and the only way I can do it is when it's frozen in some way. Mm. I'm wondering whether at some point you, you you felt like you needed to define it or you were okay with it being... No, it was somewhere informing. Like I realized that the more I sat at that desk with all these dolls and by the way other objects came in and I showed them to you, which were firing so much that I, I learned to trust them. And what started happening to me was I became in my mind I think invisibly this kind of researcher. It was so nice to not be the actor character, uh, the character who has to move and create and find and whatnot. She's just a woman who's sitting at her table and discovering things that are popping off her table. So they, I would have never thought of being a social, uh, social research. This is a woman maybe who she has to write something because very often I would try with this camera in one hand and write and write letters. And those letters would be so large and then could shoot the doll. And is the doll the one I'm writing to? Or I'm writing to somebody else about the doll? Uh, uh, but then I became. So somewhere, but you're not putting it down saying, oh, I'll become a researcher. Hmm. But it's beginning to make its stamp on you. But in a way, when you're, uh, when you're in, in the work, yeah. you, you are thinking of the narrative that you're reading in the moment. No. Not at all. No, you're fighting it. Mm. You're, you're, you're letting yourself get very uh, populating that uh, room with more and more and more and telling yourself that's still image that we go on collecting because 
We wanted to enable this exercise, be able to put all those still images in various permutations and combinations. Pick up a bunch of put them there, put up the bunch of But if you start building a narrative, then you will organize those still images in the way that you structured it in your head. And we wanted to battle that as well. So you are able to go through the pictures. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so. <laughs> So that you can see here, these are those puppets, very bad image, I'm sorry. These are the Rajasthani puppets, these are the dolls here, and so you're getting these multiple... Um, okay, then things like this started here, really affecting me. So that's my face, and one of the puppets, she's sitting there looking the other way. And this notion of, is it me who's lying there? Because she was a this sized, very beautiful puppet. Or is she someone I knew? Or is she the story that I have to tell? Uh, so, you know, you start multiple forms start uh, 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 entering your head. Now, that was her. Now, she is only that small. But when she lay there next to these women, it was like a whole civilization that had got buried. Then came, we put in the camera there and the feet. And um, this is what started happening. So, from the hand, to the feet, uh, and then we added building blocks. You know, those um, blocks that children play with. And then it became really like a civilization, this idea of civilization started coming in. So then you're sitting at a table and those civilizations get built on your table that, so does a researcher create her own civilizations as well that she researches? I mean, I just love this image. It's, you know, it's a bit like, I don't know what, some Mohenjo-daro or, and it, you can see the real stuff there as well. So the actor can go and intervene and play with it, and yet he can take a still picture of it and put it away somewhere there. Um, so this is exactly what I, I thought. What was it? I was wondering whether there was a very sort of clearly defined canvas that you started feeding into. These objects we started narrowing now. Mm. So the, one day the keys entered, you can see the keys here. And because the woman had been there from the beginning, Ata came in, um, yeah, it's an old bad habit. Um, when in doubt, <coughs> put some Ata because it uh, <laughs> uh, fires. And then, yeah, I think this also comes, I think, from Kathakali, the try and make the entire atmosphere as out of the ordinary as possible. So then when that started, when we put this, for days together, this putting our sweeping it, making foot patterns, it became about travel, somewhere it began. Then these objects traveling over the, sometimes salt, sometimes Ata, then leaving their pattern, then leaving marks. Again, a little civilizational. Then putting a light under a, a, a light glass, lit, lighting it from below, and then, you know, when you see this large and the light shining through the beads, right now we're only thinking of firing our own imaginations. This is not about, oh, I've got a story. Now this, this became big. These, uh, you you uh, just chuck pills, you cover it with Ata, and then I would blow. And this revealing, it was like revealing people who are buried under some, um, and this happened you know, putting pictures. So you just chuck, you put Ata, you blow, you don't know where you're blowing. And then suddenly this man emerges along with the bodies of, I don't know, and uh, the, this is the sound that we never get. <coughs> ah, these, you know, for me very important, I must say, because you're alone in that room, you have to take things that will really uh, push you. For me, objects, and objects that are imbued either with a history that, um, uh, one has given them, but better still, not me, that uh, it's a history given to it by a whole lot of other people. I happen to, get, I happen to go to Durban and get this uh, lovely cane made, a bicycle, with a woman at the back, it's a cycle rickshaw with a woman at the back with her cane umbrella, and she's just sitting there, and this cycle rickshaw is. And the woman told me, it was translated to me, that this, these, these toys are actually made by stealing uh, tele wire in the night, and they fashion these cycles in the night, and by day they are sitting by the street side, and they're selling this. So that woman who sells and makes and in the night, and then she crafts this cycle, and there's a woman at the back with her umbrella. All of these come bang together. So you have to then improvise with that object, because it is speaking so much already, and what will happen to it 
So, so there you go. there's the woman. By the way. So in this um, in this sort of world of images, yes. in thousand images, yes. How did you? Um, You're going to ask me the same question. No. So yeah. How did you place yourself <laughs> in, in in a performance? Wait, did you did you have to give yourself some anchors as to who are you? Because I, I think you work with that quite a bit. No, you, your no, breath, no, your no. All of that. You see, I'm telling you, Monday. Please hmm. believe me. One day, <laughs> one day you see a mirror in the room. So you hold. But your personality, usually in performances, very strong. And I'm wondering how you tamed it down. Yes, yes, and I've also had this criticism, and it's terribly valid. Maya, you, are you all right? Maya, by the way, I made a show called which we're not talking about called Lady. Uh, Are you home, Lady Macbeth? And somebody said, "You're so small. Your images are so big. You're okay with this? You're the actor. You're the solo performer. And how do you think you're doing?" But then, what to do? <laughs> what to do? You can tell the lighting guy, "Give me an interesting light, please, so that they see a bit of me." But I just love what we have crafted, and hopefully that that contradiction or that that it's not contradiction, that clash, that tension on stage between this woman who's leave, leave trying to live her life. And this thing that she's kind of making as actor, as character, as this flowing out of her body, and then she doesn't look. I very rarely look at the image, but I converse with it that it will speak. So Now, see, Mr. Gandhi, okay. look at this. Okay. This mirror. <laughs> this mirror made multiple cycle rickshaws. I was nobody that day. You know, most days I was nobody. I just. It's like being in a lab and doing your experiments. It's very hard to imagine you being nobody. No, no. <laughs> this is. Acha, then this is me. My I really only entered with hands and with feet for the longest times, longest days. And to cup your hands there, you don't need them the rest of your body. But what you do realize is, if I cup my hands there, the rest of the body that's not in the frame. What is it doing, and is there another object there that? That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. What was yeah. happening all of, over there? Now, what was that, that sensation? No, what, what, what was going through your head to be able I'll to? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Now this box. This box belongs to my father. Okay, and he died in 1970, and he's been to I don't know how many countries with this box. Now, when you then project there and some of it on the box, this was just amazing. Then you talk. Okay, you talk. But what happened with us was those improvisations never got shot. Mm. So I actually lost. But the question you're asking, what was happening to you? What were you making? We didn't have a fourth camera mm. to to yeah. actually record the whole of what. So you just you curse and you just move on with your uh, experiments. Oh, and moments like this. I can't tell you there was so much. To water her, to nurture her, this woman that may grow out of the box, or that she's sleeping in that box, but just that a kettle. Uh, can I have some more tea, please? <laughs> <laughs> and then this little woman who becomes so large because this is it. I am holding her up against these other women. That's when you get a sense of yourself. But it's another kind of intervention. It's not as the prime. Oh, and these were these were just lovely because then you wonder whether you're going to make another comedy show. <laughs> did Did you have any sense of comedy in this episode? Were you? I don't know. I I don't know. I don't think so. But you know that this architect who lives nearby, he gave me his model. So the model is sitting there, and in his hands, and this is how the show actually begins. So What about the title? Where no, no. This this is object. Again, this object. And this is Hollywood for me. These green Cadillacs <laughs> zooming around, and the fact that I put them on my head and you shoot them, and they are there all green, and the green on my body—you know—you become partly part of the image. Plus, but by this time, by this time, I had already become somewhere connected with that Tasla woman. So the Tasla woman now could have anything on her head, including a Cadillac. So she kind of she carries the world on her head. These sort of things started, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this was brought up. Then here, my God, this was all too mind blowing. It's like you don't have to do anything if you're holding a mirror, and that mirror is uh, getting your face plus the whole of you. You know this multiplicity, and this was really a problem at the end that I had become very stuck. 
I was not the performer, all these things were performing. That's when then we collected, put it on our contract on thing, looked at it, fought, 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 fought against letting a narrative build, but it did build, and it became actually the story of a woman who starts at her desk, and she's writing, I start like, I, I fractured this as well, so some of the performances one had to wear, a, what do you call it? A, a, a cast. And so the cast is also in the camera. And then you're writing and you're saying, dear Rukmini or Radha or whatever, sorry, I can't finish this. I can't finish this manuscript. There's too much happening here and my mind is blocked. And so I, I, I need to stop here. That's how the show starts. And she puts the camera down and she catches, she catches, here, get another object, these tea glasses. Tea glasses that we've seen on every single railway station, at least but now you don't see them with this thin ribbed bottom here, and then it comes plain and flat at the top. Then, and then you put them in one of those six wala, you know, folders, and you, you improvise with them, and you're shooting them, and they're walking with you. They became people. They became people, and so then you would put them on light boxes, but still not knowing what would happen. And then one day we called a sound designer in to see what would happen when you re-improvised with these objects. And I'll show you a little bit. And oh. what would happen if you re-improvise? If you re-improvise, something new would emerge. Because now you're allowing the actor to come in. Because I, as a performer, I need, uh, it's one of my crutches, I do need music uh, to, to fire the actor in, the performer. I have a question. Yes. Uh, how do you select the objects? So what is going behind No, it's all random. This was entirely But behind. random also got something defined. So no, I, I also agree because uh, this Chaika glass has come many times. If it has come many times, it can't be so random. No, I'm sorry. Chaika glass... It is there in some other place, I've seen it. No, it, it happened after this. Huh. Because this is 2004. <laughs> no, heads. You do it two years. <laughs> two is different. <laughs> different jam happens in 2002, I know, because it was Gujarat. And, and we just uh, sat still there wondering how we're going to deal with it. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so shall we just do a little uh, uh, clip? Yes. Because we're definitely running out of time. Sure. <laughs> no, we're good. Yes. After this clip, we should uh, move to the <laughs> deep fighter. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll uh, maybe even not even let the whole thing happen. Sorry? What is the title of this word? Heads are meant for walking into. I'll give it to you and that later. <laughs> I also want to know the logic of the, uh, the title. Okay. You, to get you have so many questions that you are saying no time also. <laughs> <laughs> So that's that same cycle. Bye. 
much, well, as soon as the, uh, the uh, sound designer comes in, you start making content, but then you still haven't made the frame. Then you look at your contact sheet, and then the story started piecing itself together. Here's a researcher woman. She really <coughs> writes these letters, and but each time she steps out into the world, she finds another fragment of the world which helps her to go back and finish her manuscript. So then, every time you improvise, so we got three good episodes. One was this farmer suicides. One was, if I could just for two minutes, uh, show you uh, one more clip to show you exactly how those, uh, uh, that woman became, these are stories you carry in your head for a long time, a construction worker who in India, as we all know, they are camped for months, they build a hotel, it takes them two years, they are there, children get born, saris get tied, uh, jhula and lullabies, and the moment the last screw is in place, they must move from there, and never, 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 ever again will they enter that building. And, and the sheer, mm, it's such a beautiful contradiction. I mean, it's waiting there to be uh, savored. So then, when the blocks started, uh, you start using the blocks and the woman, that came to me, and uh, then again he plays music, and when he played the music, uh, Short one. Short one. Okay. So, time for people to yes, respond. Yes. So, I'm just showing you that uh, 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 this is. So, again, it's a live shoot. Shulajit is standing somewhere there. He's shooting, he's shooting. I made the, her house because she has no time to make her house. So, then, me and my researchers researching, I go to her and I say, what do you do with me? And I build a house, but there's this green car that comes and crashes it. Uh, and I'm like a child who's playing, who some child friend comes and crashes the uh, house. And then I'm just telling you, I put that car on my head, meaning that's where you need to be, and I don't spill it. But in my mind, what was going on was, this is a woman who has to carry all of that Cadillac class on her head, if need be, and still lead her life. So all this Nimbu and Mircha, uh, we had uh, experimented with the camera. So there are, and the pills are there. And then this, that civilization thing I was telling you, it became dusting this. It was like protecting her. In fact, in this show, this is actually an original piece of music. I think it's a diamond. And when sometimes you don't get your sound designer, you're doing terrible things like lucky music that already exists. And I improvised to this and then he changed later on the music. But this is an original piece of music. So she's just saying, can I come into your life? Will you let me in? And then that same Arna becomes the goats and the rivers that may never lead me to her. side by side, will you let me, and it goes on like that. Uh, and then I pick her up and I say, okay, it's time to go home now. And then I take her back to my table on which there is actually a contact sheet, which again was, uh, it was my sister, she's an architect, it was lying in the room. She had shot Rashtrapati Bhavan and uh, all these uh, Latians kind of Delhi. So one day it was just taken, put there, camera put to it, and then because the doll happened to be on it, it became part of the end of the show where I say, okay, you're home now. This is where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And so this woman with the tasla, she's actually, the Rashtrapati Bhavan, by the way, for those, it, it's the citadel of power. Huh? So this woman, this working woman, finds herself at home, which is my home actually, the researcher's home, but on that table is lying a contract sheet, which is Rashtrapati Bhavan. And so she finds herself there, and I take off my garland, 
and all these magnetic words also that we play with, I shower her with, her, uh, her with them, and I take my pen as a researcher and I put it there and I put the camera and say, let's sleep now. And then I put my own head under the camera so that she's also covered by the white of my hair, and that's the illusion. And the moon kind of rises over to uh, screams and goes to sleep on the other side. Yeah. Shall we? I was wondering because there isn't. Let's have a time limit for questions. Or yeah, I think so. Instead of heading to a DeFi jam, I think we focus on this. It may be more of a conversation. Otherwise, we're just going to rush for everything. Right. Yeah. So, opening the field. There's already one hand up. Hi. Hi. Um, in all your conversation, you spoke a lot about all these questions and associations you made with these objects, how you associated with them, but at the end of the day, it's a show. So, uh, how much, two things, one, how much does it bother you or how uh, much do you try and walk in uh, your associations, how they're getting, how, whether they are traveling to an audience or not? And with heads, if you were improvising stuff every day in a different show, uh, how much of what you thought the audience received um, informed the next day's uh, improvisation? Oh, you mean uh, whether I was improvising after having uh, played it to audiences? Yeah. No. Or it has to become... improvising from one show to the other? No. Maybe oh, sometimes... In this one, it's very difficult because you've got two or three cameras on stage. Yeah. And it's terribly specific and Shurajit is, you've talked about what he's going to shoot. Within a piece of music, your words, you improvise. But you don't improvise much else. So that, that's the great challenge for an actor like me who uh, wants the excitement of improvising on stage. Of course, it's very hair-raising also. It's all right to improvise in your rehearsal room, but in front of an audience, which happened in Deep Fried Jam, we left some spaces, but not in heads. In heads, it was quite fixed. But that other question of yours, you know, I think for me at least, this is a very big, um, it's a challenge. You want, you want to fill a moment with whatever the image is, what you're saying, the text is on another parallel, your body, uh, audience is seeing the whole thing. There are things you're hoping that is speaking for itself because I cannot see the whole image. So you want to trust that lots of messages are coming out of every moment and them piling one on top of the other and yet in the middle of it all you're also trying to navigate through the piece both as you want to be the actor the performer within it and also the outside eye but i'm so terrified of this outside eye that will impose a, a line of thinking and being for the audience that will be too imposing but you still want them to make to enter it to enter it and then make the set. So you just go on battling. But I think in this show it was particularly important for me that all of this, it, for me this is the show that is the meat of everything that I wanted to do but I didn't carry it on. Uh, it, for me it's, the, it's a show about India and I, I want you to make many shows about India. So there, there's an episode about, uh, this happened that I read the papers and I, it was about uh, a, a woman who was raped in the Northeast and, and the armed forces and about how nine women came down. I'm not showing you those clips, there's no time. How this researcher finds those nine naked women who are protesting with their bodies and she finds them with a piece of cloth. But of course it's an image, it's, it's, it's a projector projecting on my dupatta, those nine women who come to me. Uh, and for me, it was like a little bit like going back to street theatre, which is where, uh, where one's journey <coughs> began, but by another route. So, I don't know, you try, you hit, you miss. You want to call people as an outside eye to say, hey, you know, Maya, this is making sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes you do for little bits, and sometimes you just go with a sense of trust that this will speak for itself. Some bits, maybe, at, if just before the end, I'll say something that will help them tie some of the threads, but maybe not. Do you have people come in and watch you through while you're making it, or um, do you avoid doing that? I think I want it, but I avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
do you invite people to come and look at the work while you're making it, or do you uh, try and avoid it? She wants it, but she avoids it. I've done it once or twice, and there's so much talking that has to be done before you show the improvisation that you think, oh, now I'll show it, and they're going to refer to everything that I said before and not so much what I did. And then the responses that I've got are, but Maya, you said that, and I'm not quite seeing that here. So <laughs> <laughs> but I'm wondering whether that is what, oh, sorry, that is what um, an audience reaction eventually is going to be, and whether you, you just really want to put that aside. You know, I also trust, of course there are lots of people who come and say, you know, there are many moments there where I didn't know what was going on. But, you got us to enter an experience, and I enter wholeheartedly, this is what I started getting more and more. I was entering wholeheartedly, trying to look, what's happening there, what's happening there, and then maybe later on something started, but some of it just didn't make any sense. And then I started thinking, you know, I, I don't know, it's a bag full of everything. I, it can, if it becomes a bag that you make sense of everything, then there'll be something wrong with that bag for me. Mm. Uh, so then it will have to be all of these things. But as long as they are saying, we entered, because I think that's what performance is about. Preeti has a question. Yes. Actually, comment more than a I've only seen your solo is this choice of uh, having this projection larger than life. Is it for you a shift in the way you're seeing the solo performing body, in, in, you know, kind of negating the tyranny of this solo performative body and trying to displace that somewhere else? Is, is it possibly a shift in the way you're approaching the solo itself? Is not the question. I think I just was so, um, uh, what's the word, mesmerized by what the camera could do. It just became my co-actor. And I was just leaving it to say, Acha, today tell me what's going to do. And then you only do things like, uh, which happened in Deep Fried Jam, didn't happen here, that's an earlier show. Where, and we actually, here, 10 years, 12 years ago, in this very same, this hall, we set up a glass top table, uh, Shurajit and I, one layer, another layer, another layer, and the camera below. And how this thing of, um, and, and Fukuen is Fukuen, who is gone. So we were in a show way back where I had seen this glass top table, it was a little differently, but that you could, if you quick kept an object on the lowest one, you could shoot that. If you then prepare this one and pull that one out, this one would appear. And then if you scattered something on the third, it would come, it would be, you know, so that, so then you have this idea of a play station. And I think I, uh, I got so uh, attracted by it that I, I wasn't stopping to think what is happening to me. Yes. And then there will be a fault actually. Because it, yeah, sorry. Just sorry. No. No, I just want to ask two things. Is, uh, you said that uh, you were uh, tempted by a to stop and look. Sorry? You were tempted by this idea of shall we stop and look at what you can do then? And also the fear of we don't have enough. Hmm. I'm wondering how you negotiate with that. You just furiously go on and on. Because you're so terrified that you'll come up with some terribly thin, fake looking uh, structure. No, but then you don't have an outside eye as well. Right? Right. So I'm just wondering in terms of like and how do you know it is not thin or it is not diluted. Actually what happened was there were so many narratives and so many structures jumping off those still images. <coughs> One could have gone this way or that way or that way or that way, in the way that you put the images. Uh, so by the end of it, the problem was actually the reverse. It wasn't that will I get one. There were just so many embedded there. 
we did a very wonderful show here actually where the, the, the cycle guy was there somewhere hanging from here and in its projection it actually traveled around this room. There's a question. Yes. 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 And the question is not related to dance, but the thinking of uh, you have a very definite social message or a cause with which you have started. For example, you said the AP farm suicide or a woman getting raped. But when you're actually performing, are you expecting the audience to just take back the message as a, just a message or as a change in their mindset? Are you looking for behavior change? You let me start. That, how do you do it? In this particular show, I did not at all ever think I want to pick up the AP Pharma, I want to pick up Manorama, I want to be able to say something to the audience, no. It, it was truly random. It was, the sound designer is coming today, I have no idea what material will come to me. Let's see. It so happened to be the AP Pharma, that's probably because I, I know I am a political minded person, so chances are something like that will come in. But it having come in, it has to then tie up with the rest of this research. It's not about what Maya wants to say to the audience. It's about there's a glass and there's a little woman and how does this little woman respond to that, uh, the farmer suicide. It, that, that farmer suicide case becomes part of the web of what is already getting uh, constructed. It's not about what Maya wants to be able to convey to the audience in terms of a political message, no. Um, the work uh, which I saw where you were on stage and the rejection of the uh, blocks and the women was the... Uh, so I'm just uh, wondering what is your role? Who are you on stage? Are you the storyteller? Are you playing the role? I, you like I said, this research of woman. Research of woman. Okay, so how do you define you being there? Because definitely watching the thing on the screen is very interesting for me and definitely a voiceover and, and the movements which are, what are coming. So. I'm just like so, and you said that you were improvising, but at the same time you were fixing up things. You were doing this. And the show is fixed. Yeah, the show is fixed. So, so, um, so what are you researching beyond that? If the things are fixed, and then. So the character is the a researcher. The character is fixed. This actor researched. This actor set up a lab along with a colleague, and we researched and researched, and it ended up being a character as a researcher, with this formed piece. Uh, and I think this happens to me often, like the first solo I made was Koldo, where this actor was in search of a form, she didn't have a form. The story was of a father in search of her, his daughter on a platform. And so the two just go and sit like that. The form and the content of it start feeding off each other. And I think a lot of the time when you're alone, at least when I'm alone, this is what happens. That, that ooh, I'm on a search. And I'm, as an actor, I'm on a search, you know, and I'm searching what's happening with you and what's happening with you. And then, because there is no director to say, hey Maya, you know, why don't you become, try this to be, or this kind of character, or this kind of, there is nobody to say that. So you latch on to, oh, I'm just researching. And then it became a researcher because of the camera and the letter and the blah. And this, um, correct me if I'm wrong, this seems to have been a, a kind of method you've used for many uh, In hindsight, I think this is what was happening, uh -huh. but I'm, I'm very terrified of telling myself, oh, why don't you take this frame and enter this, uh, this, this new making of a performance? Because yeah. it seems to me like even Ravanama became that researcher woman who was looking yes, at... Yes, uh, an actor. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether at some point through this journey from this piece to Ravanama, whether there's been any shift of the way you think about this way of constructing work. Uh, whether from there to now, whether there's been any... Um, the searching kind of uh, and, No, and also like coming across a, a roadblock when you say, okay, now for this particular thing, this ain't working. So then, what can I shift now? I think comedy. Allow this to happen. Comedy, comedy. You gonna you make you know that you're going. This, comedy is when you know. Oh, I'm gonna make a comedy show. Mm -hmm. But then once having said that, then it is terribly terrifying because you have no idea whether you go into the rehearsal room whether it will be funny at all what you make. Mm -hmm. So then it's better to go into the rehearsal room saying I don't know what's going to happen today. Nikal gaya comedy to achhi baat. Pajayi, usko ek aur episode bhi put it in the bag. 
But I think it's in comedy where you uh, where I, you know there's a rupture. You made an episode and bang, it's over. What next? Hmm. And usually I think, I mean, I, I'm jumping the gun maybe. Usually I think a lot of my comedy characters are very cocksure women. They know exactly what they're getting from life. <laughs> so there's no searching there. And I think for me the humor, if at all it's coming out, is coming from there. These women who have the most completely ridiculous way of looking at life <laughs> and you guys don't know it and if you will be with me for the next 45 minutes, there's a little chance you may be enlightened. <laughs> but chances are you won't be. <laughs> so I think it's comedy. Even the walk, which is the last piece I've made, <laughs> and I don't put in performance. There's big shifts there. Shift tilt falls. There's a big shift there in the way that you've constructed that, I think. No, you tell me first. Why you tell me how you went about doing it? That is, you get a call on December 30th, 2012 from JNU saying tomorrow we are going to have a purely cultural platform. We are tired of speeches and whatnot. <laughs> Jyoti Pandey died on December 29th. We are all, all ourselves are sitting in our there. We can't make, and I was meant to be performing a comedy show for the uh, NSD uh, festival in January. 30th you get a call saying, will you do something on our JNU for 31st, last day of the year? You want to say no, but you say yes. <laughs> and I, I only say yes when it's comedy. Because then you want to be, who? Oh, I wonder what I'll do. But nothing as horrific as this. So you say yes, and it so happened that uh, the diversity team was there. And I'm saying, what do we do? And then we go on, I never, I never go on YouTube. You're so frazzled, you think, what should we do now? So just go on YouTube, download it, one tune, it didn't quite move. You're waiting for something to move you. And the second one, oh, it's striking something, striking something. And because we were, we were walking and walking and walking for all the days before that, I think it's not surprising. Is it, you know, you just learn to wait. Where? Where is this piece going to come from? And the first word that came was walk. And so then, then it got made. It got made, which, and then it, of course it goes on changing depending on who the. But for me, walk is very uh, challenging because I think it's on that. I like to play it on that line between am I a performer who's performing here or am I also. Maybe I'm just Maya. Maybe I'm just Maya. And the music is. But maybe it just becomes large and it takes a big step and maybe I just... So, so what, 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 what's the meaning of concern? You know? To make it like that. But I think it's always for me, there's this one thing, the large and the small. The camera helped me with this large and small. Even in the walk, this thing of the tension between the large. There's all of the city of Delhi, there are buses. I remember thinking there are buses zooming around like this. And there's a step going, whoa. So, that I find exciting, this large and small. Ranjana has just shown me the T. So, oh, like, like finishing, not the no deep fried jam. <laughs> no, no, deep fried jam I told you we are not doing today. Oh, really? Ah, That's not how you said it in the beginning. But I did say it. Please, because then I'll just barge into the I didn't say clear that there ain't going to be any deep fried jam. You said we'll compare to. That was yesterday. So now I said, let's, why don't we just continue talking about this so that it becomes at least some kind of vertical. I'm definitely I'm in your mind. So we can continue talking about it over tea. Yeah, none of us have breakfast, so I don't think jam, jam is a very sensitive Okay. Right. Thank you, Maya. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you. I'm going to do some street performance and I just come with different. I'm going to do it.